Happy Thursday, Keith Tebow, FRC Media. We are pleased to be joined as we are each and every Thursday at this time with, to have a conversation with the mayor of the city of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan. Mayor, how are you? Good morning. Fine, Keith. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I actually want to start with COVID today. Um, the state releases uh, different uh, numbers on COVID every week. We've talked about the numbers ad nauseum, you know, since this whole pandemic started. Um, this week, the governor announced a new metric. They were sort of ranking the cities based on a color code, white, green, yellow, and red in terms of the number of cases per 100,000. Uh, within the community. Um, yesterday it was announced that Fall River is actually in the red, which is the highest uh, level, which is over eight cases per 100,000. Um, have you had any further communications on the state on what this means in terms of any support from the state to help get the word out about social distancing and masks? That's what the governor did mention this week. Right. Again, we, we were on the phone uh, yesterday afternoon with the lieutenant governor and uh, we had some emails back and forth with the secretary of health uh, Mary Lou Sutters. Um, again, we're looking at those numbers very carefully. We don't have those same numbers that they have. Um, so we're going to try to get this straightened out this morning. Um, I noticed if you look at the, uh, the same report, you'll notice the amount of testing that's gone on in Fall yeah. River compared to any other community in Bristol County, whether it's Attleboro, Taunton, New Bedford, we're way above them. Uh, so we're testing at a great rate right now. Um, our numbers, um, did pop up a little bit. Uh, we, we're looking into why. We're running a report this morning to find the ages of everyone that tested positive in the last two weeks. Um, not quite sure what happened, uh, but it, the numbers are what they are. I just hope they're the accurate numbers. And I know the governor mentioned some enhanced support from the state for these communities uh, that are in the red, if you will, in terms of helping with either enforcement of, of masks, any mask policies or social distancing or just getting the word out. Um, have those discussions been had? I know the city's been doing a great job of communicating. I, right. I don't know what uh, else more the city can do, right? We're, well, we're, we are going to get some additional supports for contact tracing. And uh, they have been already started sending us some um, issues because we're a border community, obviously, with Rhode Island, and they want to make sure that we're not being impacted by people coming over from Rhode Island. So there's a couple of things we're looking at right now. Uh, we have a conference call set up a little later this morning, which will clarify a few of those things. And uh, as I said, uh, the Board of Health is already working on uh, a report for those numbers. So at least we're all on the same page. And, uh, you know, again, the state support will help us. Uh, Lieutenant Governor has been very good to us. She'll see in uh, Governor Baker have offered us anything we need, so we'll uh, we'll put some stuff together and uh, go forward from there. All right. Moving forward now to the opening of schools, the school committee this week voted on a plan presented by Superintendent Matt Malone to open schools um, in the middle of September uh, with a hybrid plan, a mix of in-person and remote learning, uh, depending on what group you fall into. Uh, what was your reaction in terms of the superintendent's report and um, the, the committee voted unanimously in support. Right. Well, it was, it was a very thorough support. I think a, a very thorough report. I think the last one was like 40 pages, but it was probably the fourth or fifth one we've gotten, Keith, which broke down everything over and over. Um, the focus on that report was getting the kids into school while still leaving um, half the kids in the building to allow for social distancing appropriate cleaning and everything but we do the committee's it was the committee's feeling that getting the kids back in school even if they have to leave again is very important if you remember um Keith, in march when we when we, when the students left they knew their teachers um mm -hmm. a lot of these students that are going from grades one to grades two grades three to grades four they don't know who their teacher is going to be the next year and they don't know them. If, if you leave in March, and I've had um, Mr. Tebow for my teacher for um, five or six months, you know me. You know it gets me to work. You know how I function. These teachers and these students are introducing themselves to each other strictly off a monitor. So if we can get something going, if possible, again, we're going to keep an eye on the numbers, and it's going to be all about safety. But if we can get something going, which we voted on the other night, I think it's important to have some contact between the teachers and the students and the parents so that if, God forbid, we shut down again, they at least know who they're talking to. 
you know, that brings me back now to, again, the COVID numbers. Obviously, it's all about safety. Um, has there been any discussion in terms of a date certain where if there needs to be a quick pivot in terms of going fully remote before school starts? Has that been discussed yet? Especially, again, the numbers, you know, from the yeah, state no, reported think, going up. I think that will happen today. Okay. So there, there could potentially be some changes? Well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to jump. I really. I mean, it's the discussion could happen today. I don't know if the change okay. is going to happen today. If something, if if the, if the trend lines go to the dark side, like um, is alleged, or if we start to clear out and go back to what I mean, you look at the last few days. We've only had you know one, two, three, three on the test positive. So, mm. and we're doing a ton of testing. So those are all positive numbers. But I gotta. I just gotta make sure they correlate with what the state's sending us and what's down in the Department of Health. But again, we're, we're, we are prepared. That plan we approved the other night has a number of contingencies in it that allow us to pivot to whatever's best for the kids, the families, and the staff. Uh, one other school issue that actually uh, dovetails into the city budget. Um, it was a uh, talk that the uh, net school spending number for schools for fiscal year 21 at this point is under 100% at 98.5%. Um, I know we've talked budget a number of times and we will continue to do so as the city council begins at deliberations in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, what was the initial thought of, of setting the net school spending below 100%? And I know you made it abundantly clear at the meeting that that's not how the fiscal year will end, that the, this, the school department it's, will be fully funded. Right. In Fall River, that's happened a number of years, a number of uh, times the net school spending number was not met, and then it was always met a little later. Again, in a pandemic budget, uh, things are still very much up in the air. We were talking simply yesterday about the charter schools assessments, and um, and again, the, uh, the additional monies we hope to get from the federal government. There are still things in play here. Um, you know, realistically, it probably would have been uh, better to go for another one twelfth budget, but I don't believe that they, uh, the council had any appetite for that. So we'll work with them and give them a budget. Uh, but I do expect there to be some supplements. Uh, matter of fact, I know there will be, and uh, we will we will meet our obligations. As uh, I just want the public to know that we haven't looked at, at our free cash number or that rainy day fund. We haven't touched any money out of that. So there is there is a surplus out there that can help us cover all our bills if we have to go that route. But um, these are very these are very trying budgets and, um, and we're still in a relatively good spot. Moving uh, on now to uh, quickly, a couple other quick points. Um, you know, you have come out in support for Democratic candidates in the past. I need to ask you just as, as a broad sense, the uh, the Democratic ticket of Biden and Harris. What are your thoughts on on Kamala Harris being the vice presidential nominee? I'm, I'm for anybody that's going to help Fall River. <laughs> that's what uh, if that's what it takes. Um, I think that that would be a, a great thing. I mean, obviously, this is a Democratic state, and if Biden and Harris want to do something to make uh, Fall River a better place to live, then I'm going to be with them 100. percent I will tell you a brief aside, though. Yesterday we were on a, a call for the census with the um, Secretary of the Treasury that presently works for Trump, um, Wilbur Ross, and he was uh, very interested in uh, our census numbers and wanted to know what we were doing. It was pretty funny. I didn't know he was going to be on the call himself. I thought it was going to be a staff, but everybody's interested in Fall River right now. Well, hopefully in a good way, right? It's always you know could lead, lead lead to lead to positive uh, the positive outcomes, and and finally just uh, on a, on a community note, you know uh, the city has sponsored a number of citywide cleanups over the past few months. I just noticed uh, this week uh, that there's going to be some sort of cleanup uh, competition for people to take part in in terms of beautifying their neighborhoods and also getting uh, getting sort of something out of it. Uh, fill us in right. on how that's going to work. All right, so what we're thinking is, um, obviously, all these uh, little league baseball teams, the dance teams, the Boy Scouts, they're always doing fundraising, selling cookies, trying to make money. So we figured to buy them, um, buy them into helping the city. Um, what, we look, what we're looking for is they pick up a uh, park or a street, and they videotape litter, overgrown weeds, um, maybe some grass that needs a little cutting, whatever they can do to show – the before and after picture of the area they decide to clean. Um, we have a little bit of a, a purse so that we can uh, award these groups with some money. 
um, 300, 200, 100. I think we'll try to announce the winner if we have it done in time at the drive-in movie that we're going to put on again at Durfee. So we're trying to get a little interest in the um, in keeping the city clean. And if we can get these people to get into the habit of taking pride in the city, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the, uh, the groups that want to do it, I'm sure they're going to help us. I go around the city now and we did a little bit of a cleanup on Saturday. There's another group coming in on Saturday of this week to do some cleanup over on North Rowcliffe. And um, I, I see a little bit of activity, which I'm very delighted to see. If there are any uh, interest in that, you can always go to the city's Facebook page or the mayor's Facebook page for more information about this community cleanup competition that's going to be right. taking and, and it's part of the Elena in our office, her phone number is there. You can reach out to her and she'll yep. help, help set you up and just let us know what you're going to do. And, uh, and again, maybe you'll get a little money for your club or your group. Yeah, sounds good. All right, Mayor, thank you as always. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Keith. All right. And thank you for joining us in FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great day.